Hi, this is Krishna Teja and you are with Packet Prep. We are in a digital century where data is the most important element. Almost all the billion dollar companies hugely rely on the data. And where do you think this data is stored? It is stored in a device called memory. That is a hardware integrated circuit which can hold the data for immediate or later use. And I'm pretty sure you know what memory is, so let me not go too much into the definition. Now imagine that you are building a desktop system and you have a lot of options. You may go with a processor with 1 MB cache or maybe 2 MB or maybe 3 MB cache. Then you might pick up a RAM of 4 GB or 8 GB or even 16 GB. You may go with 4 GB RAM if you are a very light user or you may go with 16 GB RAM if you are a gamer. Then you will go for at least 1 terabyte of hard disk and if your budget permits you may go with 120 GB of SSD. Now, why do we need to have these many memory devices? Why can't we build a system with just one memory device? Something like a processor with 1 GB cache or maybe a processor with 1 terabit hard disk, just one memory device. The issue is performance versus cost. Cache is super fast but expensive and hard disk is super slow and cheap. And the reason to go with different levels of memory is to strike a balance between cost and speed. We need to build a system which is high on performance and affordable at the cost. And just to give you some perspective on how this works out, let me take some data relevant to 2018. So here we have a cache, then we have RAM, then one SSD and a hard disk. Let me also include one processor. In 2018, the CPU is able to execute instructions at a lightning speed. It hardly takes 0.3 nanoseconds to execute one instruction. So this is the speed of the CPU. Now when the CPU makes a request to the cache, for L1 cache, the memory access time is about 1 nanosecond. And for L2 cache, it is about 4 nanoseconds. And for RAM, it takes about 100 nanoseconds. SSD, it's about 16 microseconds, or I can say it as 16,000 nanoseconds. And the hard disk drive, it's about 2 milliseconds. Or if I convert it into nanosecond, it is 2 million nanoseconds. Look at the speed of CPU. It hardly takes 0.3 nanoseconds. But look at hard disk. It is taking 2 million nanoseconds. That is pretty slow, isn't it? Now, if I try to compare in terms of cycles, at this rate, 1 nanosecond means it's hardly 3 cycles. Because this is 3 times of this. And this is about 12 cycles. This will be 300 cycles. This will be 48k cycles. And this will be 6 million cycles. So what this 6 million cycles means is CPU can execute at a rate of 1 instruction per cycle. And if the data has to be fetched from hard disk, it literally takes 6 million cycles. So basically the CPU has to halt its operations for almost 6 million cycles. So this will drastically degrade the performance of the CPU. Now look at the cache. Cache is able to supply the data at a rate of 3 cycles, which is far better than hard disk. Now let me also give you the cost comparison. Cache we cannot directly purchase outside. So let me take the example of a processor. If I take i3 processor with maybe about 3 MB cache, it's costing around uh, 4000 rupees. So just for example sake, I'll assume that the cost involved for i3 processor maybe is 3000 and for 3 MB cache roughly rupees 1000 just for example sake this may not be correct but that's fine and coming to the RAM an 8 GB DDR RAM is almost 8000 rupees 120 GB SSD is almost 15000 rupees and 1 TB hard disk is about 4000 rupees I cannot directly compare the cost here because each one is of different capacity. So for a better understanding, let me write the cost for 1 GB. If I assume 3 MB cache is about 1000 rupees, if I have to build a system with 1 GB cache, it will cost me almost 3.5 lakh rupees. And then coming to the RAM, 8 GB RAM, it's costing 8000 rupees. So for 1 GB, it will be rupees 1000. Then 120 GB SSD is 15,000. So for 1 GB, it costs around 125 rupees. And for 1 TB hard disk, it's 4,000. So 1 GB cost is 
rupees 4. Now look at the cost. Hard disk is dead cheap, but look at the cache, very much expensive. So if I build a system of 1 GB capacity with cache, this is the cost. And if I build the system with 1 GB capacity only with hard disk, it is just rupees 4. This will be super slow. So there's no point in building a system which is very slow. So I need to strike a balance between performance and cost. And that is the reason why we pick up different storage devices and we place it in a hierarchical structure, something like this. The first level, if I take this as L1, this I can take it as cache. And this cache is super fast and expensive. L2 is main memory, that's basically the RAM, which is moderately fast and not that costly. So I can say it's of less cost. And level 3, we can think of auxiliary memory. This is actually slow, but it's dead cheap. And the reason to draw this pyramid shaped diagram is it's based on the capacity. Generally, we pick up cache of 1 MB to 3 MB size, so very less space. Main memory, we take around 2 GB, it can go almost up to 16 GB. This could be around 500 GB to almost 10 terabits. Huge storage capacity, but slow. Less storage capacity, but fast. And one more thing to note. The cache and main memory, the data is volatile. What it means is, as long as the power supply is there, the data will be stored. And whenever we switch it off, the data will be lost. But in auxiliary memory, this is non-volatile. And that is the reason why we use auxiliary memory as a backup device. We store all the photographs, videos, everything into the auxiliary memory. That's basically the hard disk. All right, this much categorization is sufficient. Now, different books give it in a different way. They even include registers at the top level. And sometimes they give the cache as L1 cache, L2 cache. So instead of three levels, they go up to almost five levels, six levels. Here I've drawn only three levels just to keep it simple. And this is sufficient for gate.